uh, come craft with me and coffee talk. It is December 18th. It's Monday morning. It's 9.20 a.m. I slept until 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> I have a vague memory of Rod and Leah leaving the house at like 7 o'clock this morning. <laughs> they said bye and I was like, oh, bye. <laughs> and then I woke up at 8 and I was still exhausted at 8. I probably could have gone back to sleep, but I could smell the coffee and I could hear the rabbit having a tantrum in her cage and I just knew that I had to get up and feed her and let her out and I might as well get some coffee <laughs> while I got up. But um, So I have some crafting stuff to catch up on, so I thought that I would start filming and while I'm doing that and kind of just catch you up on what has been going on with me um, since my last coffee talk update. Um, but first I wanted to show off that I have been semi-productive uh, from my uh, invalid chair <laughs> with, my, with my recent back injury. I had a lot of projects um, in the works and some stuff that I'm just trying to, to catch up to catch up on and, and clear up and my camera tripod is being just awful today I don't know why it's not going into its usual usual position it's far much more uh, left <laughs> than it normally is for me so um, I can't physically move my move my chair uh, any closer because the drawers of the desk are right here so so this is where I gotta be one of the things that I have been working on and I showed you guys before was I did make another batch of the ready set shake um, or I need another batch of the Ready, Set, Shake uh, Lawn Fawn cards that I've been making. So I've been working on that. Um, I got a bunch done. I think this is a batch of like eight more or something, 16 more that I'm working on, just to have a few extras on hand because we do keep getting a sprinkling of other Christmas cards and stuff um, that I wasn't expecting from people from like my... Uh, crafting exchange groups people are just randomly sending christmas cards which is great um and i sent a bunch myself i just picked some random people that that shared on the list but but that means i keep getting some and i want to make sure that i have something to send them back so uh just a couple cards to keep on hand um and i've just kind of not been able to really sit here and do that i'm out of my um a2 tall top folding card bases. So one of the things that I need to do today is I need to make a bunch more so that I can proceed with this project. But other than um, basically assembling the cards and heat embossing the sentiments, um, I'm kind of done with that. So that's kind of what I'm working on today. I'd like to get this done and out of the way. Um, you guys remember last week while I was sitting here, I did some heat embossing for watercoloring, and I did watercolor a bunch of panels, um, and I didn't like the way that they turned out. So instead of just discarding it, I turned them into gift tags. I just took the, um, the nicest spot that I thought turned out on each of the, the watercolor page, and I die cut it out with the, um, stitched gift tags from the end craft design that I bought this year in 2017 these came from eBay and I believe they were only three or four dollars and the brand is called end craft design um, and they cut really well I, I wasn't actually expecting them to cut the watercolor paper but it did and I didn't have any issues and I cut another piece of just white um, 60 pound cardstock for the opposite side and just stamped a quick to and from um, on it and glued them together to make it a nice flat um, surface instead of the watercolor paper for the other side of the tag. And I got a little crafty and creative and played with my new um, Jerice uh, eyelet setter, which is right here. I took that out of the package. I love this little thing. I didn't think that I would. <laughs> And it came with, um, it was really inexpensive. I hauled it a couple weeks ago from Consumer Crafts. If you want to look back, I think it was only two, three, maybe four dollars. And it comes with all these little plastic containers of brads and washers, <clears throat> which is really convenient. Um, I do have a complaint though. It seems that these plain silver ones here, I don't know, they're aluminum or something. They don't, they don't work as well. So I'm probably going to have to replace, I went through a lot of them. And it just failed, 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 failed until I finally got one that worked. So I might end up replacing those, but I haven't had any issues with any of the darker silver-toned ones or the gold ones seem to work fine. 
Um, and I do also wish that it was like in one container, maybe not one big container, but even a divided container instead of all these little ones because they're going to get lost. And I need to find a good storage solution for those. And um, something else that I used, I also picked up from uh, Consumer Crafts on sale or clearance was this little hammer set as well to use with uh, with the eyelet setter because I knew that you needed a hammer and we do have a hammer but I didn't want to take the big household hammer out of the toolbox and then have it get lost. This one's nice and small and cute and it will fit right in my uh, my desk drawer here for all of my crafting needs and I really like that it has a secret compartment in it. <laughs> it untwists and there's actually a screwdriver um, and then there's a on this side and then there's a bunch of tips if you open it up from the bottom here there's a bunch of little tips on the inside so it's kind of a nice all-in-one small tool and this you don't need a big hammer this one is perfectly adequate for getting those eyelets set so this is my first time using it and I wanted to use it on these gift tags and it worked perfect um, the eyelets fit the hole um, I didn't have any issues figuring out what I was supposed to do I, I wasn't really sure what side you're supposed to put the the pretty eyelet and then which side is supposed to be the washer. So I experimented just both ways to try to figure out. I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way to do that, depending on what side goes on top or if you just do whatever feels right or whatever. Um, I happen to, uh, especially with something that's supposed to be two-sided, I guess. If it was a one-sided thing, if it was on the top of the card, obviously I would use the eyelet part because it's more fashionable, but um, I wasn't sure because the back side is also supposed to be functional and seen, so I wasn't sure which which side to put washer and which side to put eyelet. So I just kind of experimented and had fun. But anyway, so I made a huge stack of gift tags. I'm probably going to give these gift tags away as gifts um, because I don't, I don't use um, most of my... Um, the gifts that I give away at home to like my husband and daughter don't really even have gift tags on them. I'm like the laziest paper crafter ever when it comes to my own family. I usually just write in Sharpie like on the uh, on the wrapping paper who who it's for. So um, I'll probably give these tags away as gifts maybe to Leah's teachers because I still haven't done I still haven't done gifts for them this year. This is how much I've been thrown off um, with this back injury. But anyway, so if you saw the, the last Come Craft With Me video when I was working, working on these, I used this background, the winter Afghan background from um, Whimsy Stamps. I don't know, I don't think that it worked that great in terms of what I intended to use it for. So I, this is an example of how that one turned out. Um, when it was watercolored and, and it's really cool but I had a I kind of had a difficult time doing this on watercolor paper so I probably won't this one however um, stamped a little bit better um, this background although it didn't and it might be user error because I've been in so much pain just not being able to press down on the um, the stamp press hard enough to to get a really good impression which is fine it doesn't matter but that would but that background did work out a lot better this is the um, Chris Class flowers background so um, I had a lot of fun with this project and it was kind of really neat to be able to incorporate a new a new skill and it turns out I really like setting eyelets so <laughs> I'm excited about that and this tool is pretty nifty and um, I think this is going to end up being one of my favorite things of 2017. I can't wait to uh, to do more with this. I just I loved it. I had a blast with it. It was a lot of fun. So that's something else that I have been working on since I last touched base. I do have, um, sorry, my, I'm trying to reach behind a couple of things that I do want to get started, which I probably won't have time to anytime soon. I have so many ideas for the Hero Arts December kit. Um, there are a couple of uh, card ideas that I want to get going. One of the things, this is out right now, I would like to at least get some of these images stamped so I can work on coloring them from my chair during rest uh, rest period. So I've got it all basketed up to remind myself to do that. I have the December free image from um, Gerda Steiner, this adorable little bunny rabbit. And of course, you know I love bunny rabbits. Stitching a heart. I need to get these colored because I want to incorporate these into um, some cards. So again, this is kind of my coloring or two color pile going on here. Another thing that I've been working on that I was working on last night, actually, and it was a lot of fun, was I've been using the new, um, which was also a recent haul for me from CZ Designs, um, the Dotted Daisy, <clears throat> the Dotted Daisy Stacking Dies. I just took a bunch of scraps from my scrap bin and started die cutting. <clears throat> 
just flowers and then stacking them. I glued them together really quick and then I decorated them with a daub of Nouveau Drops. And look at the, these are great. <laughs> I even took some of my jelly prints just to see how that would go through the die cut machine and it worked out perfect. Look at how neat, I mean, you can't buy a unique um, embellishment like that. Um, it just, this is my own mono prints from my jelly plate that I have die cut and put into a flower. It's just really neat. So I have like this whole basket <laughs> so far and I'll probably make more. I've just been having a blast making these. Um, and it's really, it goes really, really fast because you can die cut all four pieces at once. So it's just one, you know, run through the die cut machine and you've got a flower and then the next one. And I would just sit there and just do it like a dozen at a time. And I think at one point I even had to get up and go back and get more scraps because I had been through all of the scraps that I had already used. So these flowers are a lot of fun. Um, look for, uh, <laughs> look for these getting passed along in a lot of happy mails because these are a blast. And I'm going to keep an eye out for more, um, uh, stacked flower dies because I, I really had such a good time with this and it's uh, it's a great okay look here's another one of my jelly prints this one's my favorite actually um, I just I had a blast and this is such a great way to use up some scraps <clears throat> so those are some of the things that I have been working on or I need to work on oh and this is out you guys remember I hauled this weeks ago the galaxy um, print duct tape to make my husband a duct tape wallet. I make him a new one every couple of years because it starts to fall apart. He loves purple and he loves galaxy prints, so I thought that I would make him a duct tape wallet. This is out to remind me to get started on that because Christmas is in a week and I need to have that. I need to have this in his stocking. So I probably won't do this on camera because I have to go back and um, do it along with a YouTube tutorial that I that I use to do this. But when it's done, if I have time, I'll show it off. So in the meanwhile, I, it occurred to me this morning that I can't continue with my um, finishing up my Christmas cards until I have more card bases. So I figured I would cut some card bases and just finish assembling um, some cards and chat with you lovely people and catch you guys up because I've had, um, I've had some stuff going on. Let me get my, um, my cutter here and we'll get chatting. And I hope you guys are really well. I'm super excited. Sorry, sip of coffee here. I'm super excited because we did our 10 subscriber giveaway <clears throat> last week and the owner has claimed her prize. Her name is Leanne and she's lovely. And we spent off and on on Saturday um, quite quite a long time just chatting with each other via Facebook. And she's, she's super lovely and I was so happy to have met her and I hope that we become friends. So if you're watching this, Leanne, hi. I have your packages going to the post office today. I <clears throat> I do have to make a post office run today. Um, I have stuff from my Etsy shop that has to go out. And also, um, my friend Kay, uh, whom I love and adore, she's one of my oldest friends, um, sent Leah some uh, packages, Amazon packages for Christmas. And I'm supposed to be getting the packages and... Um, I'm, I'm opening the boxes and then wrapping the presents inside because she didn't she didn't have the presents gift wrapped, which is fine. I have plenty of gift wrapped, so. Um, but she has been waiting for it to arrive here for I think probably close to a week, and she checks in every couple of days. Is it there? Is it? No, it's not. And she finally checked the tracking on Saturday and said, "Oh, it's going to the PO box." <laughs> I had no idea it was going to the P.O. box. I kept thinking, you know, I thought it was coming. I think she thought it was coming to the house, too. So I'm just glad that there's an, an end to the mystery. But she says they're waiting at the post office to be picked up. So I do need to pick those up very soon. I'm mobile right now, but I'm concerned that I might not be in a couple of days. So the sooner I can take care of that, the better. That might wait until this afternoon. Um, we'll see. <laughs> uh, we, are, we may or may not be getting a little snow today, and I don't like going out if there's snow, but no matter what, I do have to go into town anyway because I have to get Leah from school this afternoon from her homework club. So the post office is only about a mile from the school. So if I have to go out anyway this afternoon, I may as well go to the post office. But I was really hoping to go to the post office in the morning because although I'm done Christmas shopping for my husband and daughter, I didn't, I don't have much stocking stuff for them. <clears throat> so I had hoped to run out and do some stocking stuffing shopping this morning. And also I forgot when we went grocery shopping over the weekend, I forgot to get 
the plates and cups and napkins for Leah's class party on Friday. So I was going to stop at Dollar Tree and get those as well while I was in town. Um, but I don't know. If it's going to snow, then I'm not going to bother. And I'll just wait. My, my whole plan was last night was that I would run to the post office in the morning, uh, run into town and do the things I need, and then be home in time for lunch and be able to have lunch and just relax and then start doing these videos. But I got up this morning and my weather app on my phone was beeping saying that you have like a 40% chance of snow or whatever. And I'm like, ah, if it's going to snow, I'm not going far. So <laughs> because to go to town for us is like a 35 minute drive. So I don't, I don't want to be that far away from home if if snow's going to start falling. I, I realize that I live in New Hampshire and I shouldn't be such a baby about the snow, but I am. I just don't like it. I don't like to drive in it. I don't like to be out in it. I'm just afraid. Uh, to, there's too many people out there that just are scary drivers that I don't want to be anywhere near them <laughs> or anywhere near um, anywhere near snow or ice or anything like that. I just, I just don't like it. Okay, I'm not doing a very large pile of cards, but <laughs> I didn't realize how little card stuff I grabbed out of the drawer, but this is enough. Enough for, it's at least enough to finish my project and then some. And anyway, so <clears throat> so I'm not sure what's going to go on. So I figured no matter what, I would do video. And if it doesn't start to snow by like mid-morning, which is pretty soon, um, then I might head out. Or I can just wait and do it another day because we still do have a... Leah's party is not until Friday and we do still have a couple of days. Um, gosh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot where I have to score these. We do still have a couple of days. Um couple of days left. <clears throat> I'm probably, I usually don't go too, too wild with stocking stuff or stuff. I do have, um, actually, let me take it out and remind me to put it. I have those, um, the Shakespeare insult cards, which I think I'm going to give to Rod as a stocking stuffer. And, um, this wallet that I still need to make. And I got for him, um, just a pair of cheap, you know, like $5 sunglasses that are going to go in his stocking. He, he goes through cheap sunglasses like water. So I don't, uh, we don't invest in good ones. <laughs> he usually just gets a really inexpensive pair. So, and I've got those for his stocking and I don't think I have any, I have one thing for Leah's stocking. So she's going to need a few more things. And unfortunately we, I had to buy like new toothbrushes just a few weeks ago. So I can't follow my old standard, fill it with toothbrushes. And I'm sure I'll think of something. She's a pretty cool kid. Maybe just little nail polishes and hair bows and stuff like that. So other than that, um, and I'm still waiting for a couple of Amazon and I don't think Walmart, I think Amazon and Target, just a couple of gifts still that are still on their way. And I do need to, oh, this is another reason why I need to go out. I need to get, where's my, I actually should be writing this down instead of boring you guys about it. I need to get a few more gift boxes. I save my gift boxes, you know, for you know, the collapsible gift boxes for clothes and whatnot every year, but I can't find mine. Um, so I had to buy a few packages of just new ones, which is fine because they're, they're cheap enough because I get them at like Dollar Tree, but I need just a couple more to finish wrapping some clothes for Leah. <clears throat> so I'm pretty much done for Christmas. We decided that we were going to do a lasagna this year for Christmas Eve, which is yum. My husband makes the best lasagna ever and we're still figuring out what we're going to do for Christmas dinner. So stay tuned. Maybe we'll try something new. Anyway, so the big thing that's going on that I have been needing to update you guys about was my back issue. As you know, I've been almost crippled with the debilitating pain of whatever had been going on in my tailbone region and the area around that. I have scoliosis that was not treated. Um, my tailbone actually is curved to the left. So it is in essence at the top of the left of my butt. Um, <clears throat> and has been, you know, since I was eight or nine years old. So this, it's not like a new thing. Um, I was diagnosed with that when I was 17. It's, it's fairly common knowledge, but I mean, while I always have some degree of pain and some days are worse than others, um, I've been almost completely unable to stand or sit <laughs> or exist the past couple of weeks because I've been in so much pain and at one point was actually stuck to the point where I couldn't move and had to call my husband screaming and crying and he had to drive an hour to come home and come pick me up and rescue me because I couldn't move from where I was and it just it's not been fun so we don't have insurance or uh, my husband will have insurance starting in January but I don't have any insurance and uh, I'm self-employed <clears throat> 
excuse me, to put me on his insurance policy would have tripled the, during his open enrollment, would have tripled his insurance. So we decided not to put me on it this year and get me on it next year after we pay off some of our, after we pay off some of our debt, because once, you know, some of our credit card bills are gone, we're doing the total money makeover in 2018. Once some of our, uh, debt is gone, you know, it's not going to be that much of a hardship to actually afford an insurance premium. So, um, that was kind of the plan and that didn't work out. It was like literally, you know, two weeks after his open enrollment closed <laughs> when I start to, to feel symptoms of this. So anyway, um, and I, I've already gone all, all over this before and I apologize if this is a repeat for you, but, um, my youngest sister had met a doctor at an urgent care clinic like two years ago. And he at the time was talking about opening up his own direct primary care practice which essentially is a doctor that offers his or her services via a subscription fee instead of taking insurance and dealing with the middleman and so on and so forth and rod took the day off on wednesday and took me to meet him and we really liked him so we signed up or i signed you know for me anyway signed up um to be his patient it's a 60 dollar a month subscription fee and i had to pay a one-time application fee of 60 dollars <clears throat> no problem um so I signed up and I had my first appointment on Friday. Um, he was, he's very kind. <clears throat> um, and we really appreciate, we knew this on Wednesday from when we um, were talking to him. He, he has a very conservative approach to uh, testing and wasting resources, including our money. Um, so kind of one of the reasons why... Um, kind of one of the reasons why we signed up to begin with we knew that he or if he said that he wouldn't so we were trusting that was it going to be like okay well you know you need to go get MRIs and x-rays and you know this and that and this and that and you know it's only going to be you know fifteen thousand dollars for all this testing before i can help you and there was just none of that on friday he did um a uh it, it a, a, a history um from what I could what I could answer it's a little bit hard when you're estranged from a lot of your biological family uh, to answer a lot of specific questions um, <clears throat> but I did the best that I could and I think I am my own medical official medical history is so spotty um, I had you know just brief encounters with physicians when I was a child I had um, college insurance when I was in college um, but that you know it goes away I was insured briefly at for a couple years anyway, at, you know, a couple of other jobs and then I wasn't and I didn't really have insurance when I was pregnant, but I saw a doctor anyway and that was pretty much the last time that I'd ever seen a physician. So I'm a little bit spotty on my own medical history. I think when you, when you live a, a lifestyle where you're just accustomed to your medical stuff not even being important because it's not something that you, it's not a possibility. Like, <clears throat> I dislocated my shoulder a couple of years ago. I couldn't go to the doctor. You know, you just get to a point where it's like, well, no matter what, I mean, unless somebody is literally dying, you're not going to go. So you just got to buck up and get over it. So um, anyway, <clears throat> so I, you know, did the best that I could um, with that with him. And he did, um, he also did a physical exam and um, spent some time uh, feeling my spine and my back and all of those areas. So my official, uh, well, I, I don't know if it's tentative anymore. I thought it was tentative at the time, but my official diagnosis was that, um, the muscles surrounding my tailbone area, remember that my tailbone is at the top of my, the left of my butt, um, <clears throat> are just, or they're broken. They're starting to fail. They weren't intended to support the whole body on the basis of the spine, so they're just, they're finally just calling it quits. So, what I was experiencing were some pretty severe muscle spasms. <clears throat> so, uh, my treatment, um, I'm sure that there's going to be many, many parts of that, but the first part of my treatment is to obviously get me out of pain um, and to get me more mobile and his. Um, his approach wasn't to just say, here's some painkillers. Um, <clears throat> so, and remember my background is in pharmacy, so I knew exactly what he was prescribing. <laughs> However, my background is not in, um, in doctoring or whatever. So I was like, eh, why are you doing that? So I was given a high dose of prednisone, which is, uh, steroids essentially, uh, which I have to take for nine days. This is day four for me <clears throat> um and the dose uh will slowly decrease so today i'll start to take a, a smaller dose but um and that's just to help with the swelling 
Um, and then of course muscle relaxers to take at night, which I've only taken twice, I think now. Um, I don't, I don't even know if they help, but they, they make me really sleepy, but it's not the good kind of sleepy. I still, um, like I was tired, but I couldn't, it's just like having insomnia. I was exhausted, but I couldn't shut off my brain. Like, I don't think they necessarily helped me fall asleep and I don't know if they helped me relax <laughs> or not, or if they help my muscles relax. So, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to take them anymore because I don't like that uncontrollable sleepy feeling I guess I should say I don't I don't really like to feel out of control with that and then it just it seems cruel to not be able to fall asleep when you're that tired anyway anyway so um, high dose of prednisone for nine days it's 60 milligrams for the first three days 40 milligrams for the following three uh, three days and then 20 milligrams for the last three days so this will be my first day with 40 milligrams so let me just tell you what it was like <laughs> Well, wait, one more thing I should say is that he said that, excuse me, a sip of coffee. He said that I needed to stop taking ibuprofen. Um, I've been dosing myself with the prescription dose of ibuprofen pretty religiously for years. Um, and although I'm not, I, I don't believe that I'm having any of the stomach side effects from that, um, he thinks that I could probably just develop some sort of horrible esophagus bleed or whatever. <laughs> and, um, so he wanted me to stop that completely. So I'm on zero ibuprofen, zero pain medication whatsoever currently. <clears throat> so I had to wait until my ibuprofen dose would, would have worn off on Friday to take that first dose of prednisone, which was two, two o'clock was when I was due to take ibuprofen. So... Um, I took the prednisone instead and I didn't really notice anything except I forgot I had taken prednisone once before and these are 20 milligram tablets and I remember taking 20 milligram tablets once before many many years ago I had a really nasty like cold bronchitis infection or whatever and my doctor gave me like a quick dose of prednisone to just help with my lungs so and I had in the I didn't remember until I had taken them on Friday how absolutely disgusting they are. <laughs> they're not coated tablets, so they're not going down like a Tylenol or an aspirin or an ibuprofen that has that nice coating on it that doesn't start to dissolve until it actually gets in your stomach. They start to dissolve the second it hits your mouth, and they're so disgusting. <laughs> and be also because they're not coated, they're a little bit harder to, to swallow. They don't go down as smoothly. So, um, And, of course, I had to take three of them. <laughs> it's really gross. And it takes like an hour to get that taste out of your mouth and your throat, and it's like, ugh. It's so gross. Anyway, so I took my uh, my prednisone at two o'clock that afternoon, <clears throat> and then um, then I just tried to carry on as normal and do do my stuff. Um, I need to get some yellow paper. <clears throat> I um, was sitting at the desk and uh, trying to do a little bit of crafting. Oh, look at that! I got a got an edge here trying to do a little bit of crafting and my stepson uh, needed some help with something. So I was talking to my stepson and I was kind of lost in that conversation and not really paying attention to, you know, what else was going on. I was sitting here at the desk and then at like, I was still talking to him at like 3.30, so about an hour and a half later, about 90 minutes later. So I'm sitting here and I realized, is this upside down? I realized that not only was I sitting back in the chair, but my legs were crossed sitting in this chair, which is like a normal instinctual position that one might take when they're on the telephone having a, a casual conversation. It's something that I would do without even thinking about, but because I'd been in so much pain, um, it just wasn't like sitting in this chair had been barely possible. Um, and even then for not long periods of time, <clears throat> but not only was I sitting, I was sitting with my legs crossed. I didn't have any pain at all. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, what is going on? This is so weird. Like it just, it was so instinctive. I didn't notice I was doing it because it wasn't hurting, you know? So, um, you know, after I got off the phone with Tyler, <clears throat> I stood up and I was like, I could feel a little bit of an ache, but it didn't hurt. Like normally when I, I'd have to like grasp the desk and slowly rise and, and just take my time and, you know, still scream and so on and so forth. And it was like, oh my God. And that was within 90 minutes of taking that 60 milligrams of prednisone. So long story short, um, that it's been three days since I've been on that and it's been kind of the same thing. I'm not without pain. I'm still having, I still have pain in that area. It's just not anywhere near as bad that it's close to crippling. So in essence, I feel just absolutely great compared to what I have been feeling. 
<clears throat> so I feel like I can do this stuff. I actually drove myself on Saturday. Um, I may have overdone it a little bit on Saturday. Got a little bit too cocky. Um, I drove myself to, to, to town, so about 35 minutes each way. Um, and then I did the grocery shopping and I was completely exhausted and I was in a lot of pain by the end. Not as bad as before, so not crippling pain, but I was in a lot of pain. So I may have overdone it on Saturday, so that's why I'm um, still hesitant if I should run out and go shopping today or not. Another reason why, not just the snow, but... Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, it just... I, it's just been amazing. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even describe what an improvement it's been. Um, it's given me a little bit of my life back. I can work on some of these projects and get them out of the way. Um, unfortunately, this is this might not happen. This is probably just my own irrational fear. But now the doses are just going to go down. So today and then for the next two days, I'm only taking 40 milligrams. And then for the following three days, I'm only going to take 20 milligrams. So I'm afraid that. The pain is going to return proportionately to how small the dose of the steroid is. So we'll see. I'm not due to take my 40 milligrams until 2 o'clock this afternoon. It's not even 10 a.m. It's like 9.50 a.m. Um, we'll see how that goes, and I'll keep you guys updated. Um, so this might be just my own irrational fear. Uh, I'm also uncomfortable from other things. Again, I can't take any ibuprofen, so I still have... Um, I'm. I have menstrual cramps right now. I'm due to get my period in a couple of days. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm suffering from that. I have, I still, I'm still having my regular scoliosis pain, which is always there and always constant. And the ibuprofen helps to take the edge off of that. Um, so I'm still a little stiff and sore and I can tell the difference because it's in different places and it feels differently. Um, so I'm still having my regular scoliosis pain, my shoulders, which are crap are still painful <laughs> and they just get worse in the winter. And I have a knee that has some cartilage damage. So that is also uh, painful. <laughs> so I, I, I do not have my normal, um, you know, helping with the everyday aches and pains medications that I would normally take. I'm not having, so I am experiencing those everyday aches and pains, which is unfortunate. Um, but there's not too much that I can do about it. So I'm just going to have to suck it up and, what is this here? Suck it up and, and deal with it, I guess. And maybe when I have my next appointment with him... Um, I can get the green light to take some Tylenol or something at least. <clears throat> something at least. Now I'm just going to cut up some panels for the, um, the yellow, the yellow domes here. <clears throat> and then get those all attached. So that is what has been, go Ooh, I'll do it this way. That is what has been going on for me. I'm feeling so much, I'm not repaired, but I'm feeling so much better. So one of the other things that, or two of the other things that, that can be done here, um, and not really having to do with his treatment, but he does believe that I should have an x-ray, um, because nobody has seen my spine in 21 years since I was 17. Um, so we should have a look at that. He also doesn't believe that it's something that we need to rush on. Um, so that's something that we can save up to get done. And we have a price quote on that, and it seems pretty reasonable. He does, because he doesn't do insurance or anything, he does have um, a, a pricing arrangement with a radiologist to do discounted cash um, pricing on something, something like that. And it seems very reasonable. Um, it's not time to have that done anyway. We need to resolve my, my pain issues before we can do something like that. So it probably won't be until after Christmas. Um... <clears throat> So we do need that, but again, it's not an emergency. He believes that he was able to diagnose me without... Oh, there's something on this. He believes he was able to diagnose me without without having that. So And so far, it seem, he seems to be on the ball, so we're going to trust him on that. Um, he does believe that I will need some physical therapy to, uh, to rebuild some of those muscles. Wrong way. Rebuild some of those muscles and hopefully continue to work on the journey of... Not being pain-free, but not being that painful in that region <laughs> anymore, which is nice. Um, th uh, another thing that I can do, um, that I can start doing now to help, is to lose some weight. Um, which, uh, I, because I can't exercise, and, I, and it's not just this, because of the stiffness and the lack of mobility <clears throat> in the pain of the regular scoliosis has not been something that I've traditionally been great at exercising. However, I can... 
uh, watch what I eat um, and try to do better that way. So I will, uh, we've already kind of started that, <clears throat> that part of the journey. Um, I do tend to have um, a little bit more success going low carb, not no carb, but low carb, um, <clears throat> which I've learned in the past from other weight loss um, adventures <clears throat> works better for me. So, um, so I'm kind of working on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Yucky. Um, so just kind of working on some low carb options for me, uh, is going to be best. I, um, so I went grocery shopping on Saturday and we got, we got all those things. I am a child of the eighties. So <laughs> what that means is that I grew up in a house where we drank diet colas <laughs> with every meal and um, I don't like the taste of sugar, sugared beverages, anything because I'm just, I'm so accustomed to that diet, diet taste. But this also means that I, I'm just using up some old tape, by the way, you're going to see me, um, and with some new tape here, you're going to see me do some really weird taping stuff. <laughs> These are just my personal cards. Um, so I'm, I'm just using up some, some of this big fat tape here <clears throat> as I go. Um, <clears throat> So I, it also means that I grew up in a house where the food pyramid that we were taught was, uh, had like 11, uh, bread servings a day. <laughs> so I am very much a carb freak and I love my bread products and my pastas and all of that stuff. So I don't mind giving up like the sugar. I mind giving up the pasta. <laughs> so that's going to be the really hard part for me is working on that. But I'm, I'm determined to help myself lose a little bit of weight might help keep some of the pressure off that part of my body. So, and you know what, and even if it doesn't, I need to lose some weight anyway. So one of the other things that I had to do, um, was I had to have my, I had to have like a full blood workup. <laughs> Uh, because I hadn't been done in, you know, like 17 years or something. So, um, <clears throat> God knows I probably have like all the things wrong with me. So <laughs> we'll wait and see until the tests come back on that. <clears throat> um, anyway, so that is what is going on for me. <clears throat> I am doing okay right now. I'm not doing great. I am doing a lot better. As soon as I say that, I swear my right shoulder started aching. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so I think I'm going to be okay. Just going to take it easy. Even I'm making sure that I'm spending a quantity of time for every time I'm crafting. I'm spending an equal amount of time relaxing in the recliner um, with my legs propped up and my heating pad on um, and just doing some stuff from there. One of the reasons why I want to get some of those images stamped out and colored is so that I can color from um, from the desk here and not the desk, the, uh, the chair <clears throat> and still have something to do and still feel a little bit productive. I am afraid that I'm going to start to lose my mobility as the steroid doses go down. Um, so I've been just doing some extra stuff around the house. Um, I've been doing some meal planning, um, some easy meals that Rod can pull together. Um, if I'm not able to move again, unlike when this happened the last time I didn't have any warning and then all of a sudden I couldn't stand or move. Um, it was just like I, I woke up in that much pain. Um, it, well, I shouldn't say that it, it decreased gradually, but then like it went from just being really crappy to, oh my God, I can't fucking move within like no time at all. So <laughs> it was a very dramatic decrease in quality of life going on anyway. So um, <clears throat> I'm afraid that that's going to start to happen again as the, the dose goes down. So, um, just preparing stuff, uh, trying to catch up on some laundry. I still can't. And to be fair, I couldn't really do it before, um, lift a lot of the laundry out of the dryer, um, all at once. So, um, just kind of the way our, our washer and dryer area is like a little tiny corner of the bathroom where you can't actually even head at it face on. You have to get into the washer and dryer from the side. <clears throat> uh, so I've, I've not 
comfortably been able to unload the dryer. But Leah helps with stuff like that, and she's little and she can squeeze in there, so I'm not too worried about that. But just trying to catch up on some laundry um, because Rob, my husband Rod, is a retail store manager. It is the week before Christmas. We're not going to see him until Christmas Eve. So thank goodness Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. He'll actually have that off. So he'll have Sunday and Monday off. Monday is Christmas. Um, and two days off in a row is unheard of anyway <laughs> uh, for a retail manager. But <clears throat> um, so that'll be, re it'll be really nice to have him. And then on Christmas Day, after Christmas, um, we usually take down the Christmas tree <laughs> and get everything put away. So we're actually all looking, really looking forward to that this year because we're going to do um, like a living space rearrange when we do that to kind of accommodate the... Um, the recliner and my husband doesn't know this yet but he also has an electric drum set sitting underneath the tree for him so we need to uh i need to i i knew when i dropped the drew up the floor plans of where i wanted stuff to go i knew that we needed to account for that so <laughs> he's gonna have to have a place we can store it um <clears throat> certainly it disassembled and it can slide under something when, when it's not in use which is one of the perks of this particular machine but <clears throat> excuse me um, he definitely, um, I definitely needed to make sure that I, at least when looking at the way things that we were going to have a floor plan where he was going to be able to do that. So he doesn't know that yet, but I made sure to account for that when I was drawing up our, my designs for our new, our new and arranged, uh, living space. <clears throat> so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but anyway, that is, I think, pretty much all that I have to catch up on. I did um, a little crafty shopping on Friday. We talked last week about the Lawn Fawn release, and I picked out a few pieces from the Lawn Fawn release. Um, and I also um, had uh, a little bit of Christmas money from my mother-in-law to get some crafty treats. So um, I picked up uh, a couple of things. I have a Hallmark scrapbook order, which I ordered on Friday and I know was delivered yesterday, Sunday, because I got the email saying that it was delivered. I know that um, the post office is doing um, Sunday deliveries this time of year. Uh, so I know it was, I just haven't actually gotten down to the box to get it, but I'll get that eventually. So I'll have a Hallmark scrapbook haul coming. Um, I did place a scrapbook pal order as well. Um, and I believe my, my lawn fawn stuff is coming. Like there's some coming from scrapbook pal and some coming from Hallmark scrapbook. Their prices were pretty close to each other. I think we're talking like a matter of only like within 20 cent difference, depending on where, but some sites were out of something and some sites were out of another. So it was just easier for me instead of having to wait forever for stuff to come back in stock than to just order um, from two different sites. And I have some other stuff coming in. I have um, like from Scrapbook Pal, I finally bit the bullet and got, <clears throat> I won't bore you again with the whole, the whole details, but finally got um, uh, <clears throat> some dies to go with some of my uh, Lawn Fawn sets that I previously was determined to fussy cut just because um, Lawn Fawn has so many interactive card stuff that I want to make sure that all of my images that I'm going to use with the Lawn Fawn interactive dies are calibrated properly, blah, 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 blah. So get those dies. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I finally bit the bullet and just, I have like a bunch of just dies coming in that go with stamp sets I already have. So it's probably nothing super exciting to show off. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to haul it on camera because it's pretty boring. They're just dies, but... But we'll see. Um, there are so many other places that I still wanted to order from, but I ran out of crafty budget rather quickly <laughs> um, for the week, even accounting for um, using a little bit of Christmas money. So <laughs> um, that might have to wait. I do. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it this week with Christmas, but I might even wait until the new year, but I'm working on a, a nice Blitzy order. And, um, and what is up with Blitzy? I was shopping their clearance section again last night, just kind of going through. And they have like half of their stuff in their clearance section. They don't even have anymore. It's like been discontinued, but you click on it and it, look, it, it seems like it's in stock and then you try to buy it and then it says discontinued when you actually open up the page. It's like, can't you just... But it's been like that for like months. Can't you just hire somebody to clean out all the stuff that's not supposed to be there at this point? Like, come on. <laughs> it's frustrating, man. I think you have it and then you don't. And uh, Anyway, 
So I do want to place a Blitzy order. Um, there are a few more Nouveau drops that I'd like to get. Um, because I'm having fun with my Nouveau drops. <clears throat> a lot of fun, and now I'm making flowers with them even, so I'm going to be just ooh, going through Nouveau drops like crazy. Um, and then a couple of other things from Blitzy and what else? A new to me website. I don't think I'm going to place an order because I didn't find anything that I wanted to buy at, at great prices, but I found a new to me website called Marker Pop, um, which looked pretty cool. So I'll start to keep an eye on that and see what they've got going for sales. <clears throat> I want to place an Alpha Stamps order, another Alpha Stamps order, and if it's anything like the first order that I placed with them, I'm not going to get it for several weeks, so um, so that's okay. Um, oh, and I saw the Hero Arts Valentine's 2018 line, and of course I want them all, um, but I'm going to limit myself. <laughs> I might just get like one if I can. I don't know. We'll see. Or I might just pass because I did just spend a lot of money at Hero Arts with my add-ons. Um, also coming up for me, I need to do, and it probably won't be today, um, I need to do a plan with me <clears throat> instead of a, a plan with me coffee talk instead of a craft with me coffee talk because it is time to do my January 2018 budget and because we're going to be doing the total money makeover and I need to be accountable I will be doing that with you guys I probably won't show all of our details or whatever about how much we owe but I think it should be pretty safe to talk about um, how I'm going to um, do my crafty budget and like my grocery budget and stuff like that and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you guys just like the one major bill that I'm working on at a time so that you guys can see how much I'm actually putting towards it so I'm gonna do that I'm also working on my 2018 business plan for my Etsy and eBay shops <clears throat> of course the business plan is always make more money <laughs> always make more money so um, so we'll see a lot of this crafty spending that I do um, is not a tax write-off because I use um, I use this stuff for personal use as well <clears throat> So I could only write off, um, like, well, okay, let me, let me go back and, and say a little bit more accurately. If I do a personal project, like right now I'm working on, a, on what's a personal project. Um, this, this is like, um, this is, I don't write off my adhesives or anything because I use them for personal stuff, but like my papers, I actually do keep a stock of colored paper that's for personal use, and I keep a stock a stock of paper that's for business use. <clears throat> my personal use papers tend to be a little bit less quality than the business ones just because um, I don't care. <laughs> um, but sometimes I will run into a case, and they, they, they go in two different places. Uh, there's two different drawers over here. Uh, to my right where the papers go and that's how I know the difference and then I can you know then obviously I know that they're different brands and I can actually feel feel the difference but um <clears throat> sometimes I have to borrow from one or the other and when I do that I just I just switch so say that <clears throat> say that I needed um these yellow pa background papers I needed to borrow some from my business then I would just do that and then I just switch something out you know into the other and it's all right here so you've got to be really careful about stuff like that when you have a business because you can get audited at any time and they even suggest um in one of my favorite books i actually have it right here if you happen to be um self-employed and working from home and of course it's dusty but i'm a self-employed tax solutions by june walker and she actually suggests that you um not necessarily you know like every week or whatever but maybe every year just take a photograph of your workspace, especially if you're working from home. So if you do ever get audited, you can kind of just, you know, the IRS doesn't, oh yeah, sure, you don't, you know, um, use these business papers for personal, you know, personal use. Sure you don't. And it's like, no, seriously, look, these drawers right here, <laughs> this one is physically labeled. This is for personal use. This is for business use. So then, you know, having some photographic evidence um, on your side is... Um, is really nice. So knock on wood where, where I make such a low val you know, low amount of money anyway that I'm allegedly at very little risk for ever getting audited, but, <clears throat> but you never know. And I'm always pretty careful about stuff like that. So, and I'll usually, um, redo my photographs for my workspace. Also, I do carry inventory for my eBay shop. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have to do a physical inventory every year every January of those items uh, because I do the uh, the cash accounting 
uh, method for the physical inventory that I carry. So I'll usually, once I do, that makes a huge mess doing inventory and it'll take over half the house. Um, once I finish doing that and everything's all neat and clean is when I'll redo my photographs for the year and I just, I keep them on file. You know what I do? Um, I keep them like on my computer, but also in case... You know, if my because this has happened to us. You know, our computers have crashed and burned and just um, never <laughs> uh, just died, and you know, you lose everything that's in it. I'll also um, email myself the photographs to my email account, and then I save them. So that way, if I ever, uh, that's kind of like my backup. Um, if I ever need the photographs and I can't get to them, I can just access my email account, and that's where where my photographs are. So anyway, that's um. That's what's going on with that, but I do um, I do have a, a legal uh, business in this house, so um, I am pretty pretty careful about making sure that there's a specific use uh, for stuff that I'm bringing in. Um, I'm going to try to continue with that. I wish there was an easier way that I could do it. I'd have to say that mostly the, the only things that I tend to write off for the business supply-wise are shipping supplies um like the you know if i needed bubble wrap or labels and stuff like that because i don't in my uh my stiff mailers that i use for mailing out my my cards um i don't really use i wouldn't really use those for personal use anyway so <laughs> like when i mail a card to a friend i'm just popping it in an envelope with a stamp but if i'm mailing a card to a customer i have to have tracking on it um to, to show etsy that i shipped it <clears throat> excuse me so it actually has to go into a mailer it gets wrapped up in cellophane and it goes into a mailer and it gets shipped to a customer that way via a postage label so those are all things that um that are kind of no-brainers like I, I have no use for them in my my personal life so those are business um I'm, i can't write off stuff like my um my cricket because i use that for personal use um i mean that, that was a gift anyway so um i'm not really and that was also years ago so <laughs> so that's not really a concern but like if i wanted to upgrade a cricket upgrade to get a new cricket um because i use it for personal use it's not it's not a business use only thing so it's not really a business use um my uh i could write off a part of my internet bill um, because I do probably about 50% business with the internet. I don't just because it's a big pain in the butt. I do not, ca I do not qualify for, um, any sort of, um, what's the word? <laughs> any sort of deduction for having a home office because I don't have a home office. My, there's no specific designated room in which for me to have an office. I work in the main room of the house. So if there's no room with specific square footage, um, that you can calculate takes up this much um, of the expense of rent, this much of the expense of utilities, you can't do it. So I don't get any sort of tax write-off for working from home. Someday we hope to. Um, and that would be really cool if I could have my own office slash craft space or whatever, but we just, we don't right now. So whatever. Um, what else? What are some other things? I keep a mileage log in my car of um, any traveling that I do that's strictly for business only. Um, in most cases for me, that's just running to the post office. <laughs> or if I have to go to Michael's or Joanne's or something, then I just quickly jot down um, the mileage on that. It's not that big of a deal. Um, the tax right, I don't really travel. I usually I do a lot of ordering online, so that doesn't really... Um, it's not really a big thing for me, but if you're... If you're um, if you travel a lot for your home-based business, then make sure that you're you're doing that. So, what else? It used to be a lot more, um, a lot more when I was doing a lot more eBay because I was going to the post office and I used to have to go sourcing inventory, you know, go to all the flea markets and stuff um, with regularity. Now I don't, so um, my it's very minimal, very minimal. I do not, um, I do not write off my adhesives or anything because I use a good chunk of that for um for personal stuff and it doesn't really it's not really that big of a deal so i mean it's not that much money anyway it's like you know 50 bucks a year or whatever <laughs> it's certainly not going to make or break me so that's not that big of a deal um let's see oh yeah a lot of stuff because i use it for both it's just not it's just not right offable but to be fair um, I'm also not making that much money. So, I mean, if you're only making a few thousand dollars a year, it's not that big of a deal 
to pay your taxes on it. <laughs> it really isn't. I don't know why people are so, um, I serve as a mentor um, for an uh, eBay group and also now Etsy. Um, I've been admining in a, in a large Etsy Facebook group and just trying to help people with stuff there and just seriously like people are dumb. <laughs> oh, you know, I don't want to pay taxes on it. And but you know, like, well, it's not like they, you know, if you make $500 a year, they're not going to take the five. They're not even going to take half of it. Like you might not even owe taxes because it's so little, but you still have to claim it. <clears throat> or just the amount of misinformation out there that, oh, you know, well, you know, you can make up to $800 a year and not have to claim it. And like, no, that's not what they say. <laughs> if you make $10 a year, you still have to claim it. It just, it just means that you're not going to owe any taxes. <clears throat> anyway, so I don't make a lot that it's that big of a deal. And I file jointly with my husband who does draw a W-2. So essentially anything that I would owe in like self-employment tax or social security tax comes out of his tax return. And really it's not, it's not that bad. I think it's like a oh, hundred dollars a year or something. It's not that bad and it's not worth, um, it's definitely not worth hiding assets or, um, or anything like that. <clears throat> However, part of my 2018 business plan is to actually be bigger and be better. Um, so um, I'll go into more detail about it another time when I'm actually doing my doing my list. But I think um, because what I do is just so weird, I think that what, in terms of the cards that I make, and um, I don't have a particularly popular shop, um, one of the things that I'm going to do is just say screw it and if I'm not making the sales that I want to make anyway I'm just going to make what I want to make and people buy it or they don't buy it and <laughs> just start being a little bit more of myself and a little bit less mainstream and we'll see how we'll see how that goes <laughs> because I really do enjoy this and I think um I, I really only sell because I, I'm just trying to make enough to continue shopping for crafty stuff because I love my crafty stuff. So, so basically when you see me do hauls and so on and so forth, either that's money that I've earned or it's some kind of a gift. Like my husband has, you know, given me birthday money or whatever, which he hasn't, but if he ever gave me birthday money, that would be cool. Um, something like that. So I'm very rarely have crafty needs so desperate that I have to dip into our household budget for that. So it, I'm sure that it does seem like I shop a lot, um, that I spend a lot of money. Um, yeah, I do. Okay. Even if I'm clearing shopping, yeah, I do. Just looking at some of the numbers, like, yeah, I just spent like 130 bucks on Friday without even blinking. And it was my, you know, some of my Christmas money and my entire money that I made in Etsy the week before. Like, yeah, so <laughs> I do, I admit it, I do spend more money than I should on crafting stuff, but at least I'm pulling money that I've earned <laughs> uh, versus out of like the household budget. Nobody's not having groceries or whatever because, because I hit a sale, <laughs> because I hit the lawn sale. However, in 2018, especially with the total money makeover, um, I would like to make I would like to actually start contributing more to the house and I will contribute to the house. Like if it's a really bad week for us and we really need the money, um, obviously I don't do the shopping or as much shopping and I'll use my business money to help pay bills or whatnot. But, um, also I think I should probably point out too, I'm talking a lot about taxes and stuff. We don't pay income tax here in the state of New Hampshire. So, um, I am not taking that, you know, 10% of my income or whatever and setting it aside to pay my income taxes because we don't have them. Uh, so you, I believe most other states do, so definitely don't do what I do. Check with your state. <laughs> this is New Hampshire. We do not have income tax. I do not have to pay quarterly taxes or whatever, uh, because it doesn't exist here, at least at a business at my level. I'm just a, a sole proprietorship, um, little business here. <clears throat> so at my, at my level, I do not do that. Um, so don't do what I do. Check with your state or whatever. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I thought I, I, I should make that clear. So, yeah, anyway, um, I will absolutely, you, and we've had to, you know, many times, um, you know, use my money to help pay with bills, and that's fine. But, but I don't like to do the opposite. I don't like to use money intended for the house um, and use that to pay crafting supplies because that's a big no-no, and that's where, that's where we get into some problems. But in 2018, I'd like to be upping my business game with Etsy, and, um, 
making enough that I can, I'm going to reduce my crafty spending. And I think I'm probably going to try to stick, um, I'm probably going to cut my budget in half, um, reduce my crafty spending, increase my income and pay more towards household stuff. So that's going to be my 2018 thing. I'll go into a little bit more detail with that. I do have to do my 2018 budget, <clears throat> uh, my January budget for 2018, which I will probably do in another video because I'm just about ready to start doing that. Um, in the meanwhile, um, I think I'm probably going to let you go. You guys have kept me company through a lot of work. I've been blabbing on for like an hour here. Um, I've got, I just have to do the heat embossing, the sentiments for these cards and then these are done and I'm not going to make you guys you know, watch and wait while I, I heat and boss and so on and so forth. Um, so that's about it. I'm going to do, um, a couple of videos this week, just stuff to upload over Christmas vacation week. Cause my daughter, um, my daughter's out this Friday is her last day and she doesn't go back until Tuesday the second, which to be fair is pretty short for a Christmas vacation. That's only like a week and a day. Um, they're normally two weeks of vacation, but Hey, whatever. <laughs> I'm excited for it. Um, so, but I'm going to try to do a couple of videos to get uploaded during the week, um, including a haul haul video, um, and probably some more chat with me or whatever. But I, I did definitely want to get you guys updated on what was going on with me health wise. Um, and so on and just some other stuff that was going on. So that's, that's the reason for my blabbering on and on and on. So I'll be back with some more videos. I'm going to let you guys go and, um, get this, uh, get this uploaded just to give you guys an update. And it'll probably take a few hours to upload because it's already over an hour long because that's how much I blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I'm going to do my heat embossing and then I'm going to go rest in my chair. Well, I'm going to stamp out some coloring and then I'm going to go rest in my chair and then I might do another video and I might be on the road, um, on the hunt for post office and stocking stuffers. We'll say, Oh, you know what? It is snowing out there and it's sprinkling a little bit. So that's going to be a no. And I'll just run to the post office this afternoon when I get Leah. So anyway, um, thanks for your really kind attention and keeping me company. I, it's been an hour guys. I'm still sitting here. <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm not in pain. I do know that I need to take it easy. So let me finish this up and then I'll go rest in my chair. Uh, until next time, thanks for your attention. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.